Hey guys, uh, welcome back. I hope that you were able to make some grids, make some stuff work from the last couple tutorials. Um, thanks again for watching and if you commented, thank you for doing that. Uh, if you gave me any feedback, thank you for that. Um, I Today, so we were supposed to be doing the third part of gridding, which was transferring an image from your digital grid to the physical grid. And unfortunately, some things got in the way, but I managed to do this instead. And this is gonna be one of the next photos, or the next pictures that I'm drawing. And I would love to take you step by step through the process of what I call Frankensteining. Frankensteining is when I need a reference photo, cause I am such a reference uh, heavy person. And I take multiple images from the internet or screenshots or special features or whatever and I clip them and cut them and mash them all together to make the photo I want. Um, it's quite a time-consuming process but this is one of those crucial elements that I need for what I do. Um, it helps me create unique photos out there compared to someone who might just have a screenshot or use whatever's available from the internet. Um, so I really like to put a spin on my stuff and make sure that you can't really find it in a lot of other places on the internet. I know that I've used straight up, you know, poster photos in the past and I'm not a fan of that anymore. Um, I do enjoy making my own stuff now. All right, so with, without further ado, I'm going to take you through the process of after gathering all the photos, what I did to cut them apart uh, and get this final image that we have here. So let's get started. All right, new document. Um, mine is four by six. Uh, I had that grid that I was making last time, which was also four by six. This is going to be a four foot by six foot picture. And uh, so this is how I'm gonna start. In terms of all the photos that I collected, I had an image in my head of what I wanted before I even started. I knew I wanted Mandalorian. I wanted him uh, with a blaster in his hand. I wanted him holding baby Yoda. Uh, as I will refer to the child slash baby Yoda uh, from here on out. And I knew that I wanted to kind of fit in with all of the, the pictures that I'd seen were very much him on a desert planet uh, with the sun behind him. Um, these were a couple of my inspirational images. This is actually a painting somebody did and I'm I'm glad they, it's, it's very, it's a low quality capture that I have, but that's to um, save them on the internet uh, from folks that would want to use their photos for prints. Um, this was also a big inspirational image. Um, just the idea of this is almost exactly what I had in my head when I started, um, a little bit different. I, I made it my own, but I didn't find this until I started looking for photos of Mandalorian. So I um, found this on the internet. And of course, um, also we've got the main, you know, poster image that uh, Star Wars released when they put this out. So uh, using all three of these images, I knew kind of what I wanted. I knew the color scheme that I wanted to go for. Uh, and so I just had to start building. I started off with wanting to try to find Mandalorian in these positions. So I went through on um, Disney Plus and I found a whole bunch of screenshots where I thought it might help me to find the right thing. So I have I mean, I have stuff of him close up, I have stuff of him farther away. I really like getting as close to the physical manifestation on the screen as possible. Um, there are a lot of images out there that are of, you know, well this is a concept art picture, but a lot of the times it will be toys or replica models that people pose, which is really great and I've used that before. Um, a couple others are like this I believe is an actual model and somebody photoshopped stuff behind it and effects on top of it. Um, this is the art book that uh, Star Wars pumped out. Um, just a whole bunch of things where I thought I could use, you know, inspiration, um, screenshots, screenshots, screenshot. So 
I, again, I try to find the stuff that doesn't exist on the internet necessarily already, and I try to find the poses that I know will work uh, for what I'm going for. So, to start off, I am going to import probably six or seven of these photos into this document. Um, that's how I got all of this together. This is probably um, maybe nine photos all together. Uh, and so that's just sometimes that's just how many you need to get the right composition you want um, but for starters I know I'm using this one and I'm just going to click and drag it in hit enter to make it a layer I don't believe I used this one I definitely used this guy I use this guy, but for reference, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. I know I used this one. I also use this one as a reference. I used this guy. Oops. bring that one in later. Alrighty. So I think I have did use this guy. Oops. Alright, so this is starters. Let's let's start incorporating all these photos. Um, and before I start clipping and trimming these images, just know that there are a million and one ways to get to what I'm about to do. Uh, but this is the way that I do it. I find, you know, it might either A, it might be the only way I know how to do it, or it might just be the easiest for me. Um, but please do whatever is comfortable for you. Again, I'm just showing you how I do it. Um, so I know from this photo I wanted his helmet. And so the easiest way for me to do that, I'm going to zoom in a little bit, and I'm actually going to use the wand tool. Um, and specifically for this one, I'm going to use the quick selection tool. And what that does is that if I click in an area, I'm going to, it's going to start collecting similar pixels all next to each other. And when I let go, it kind of refines the selection that it found. So I'm going to make sure that I get as much of the helmet in here as possible. I'm just clicking and dragging um, my tool. And I'm going to try to make sure that I get all of this stuff in here. Cool. It's a very nice, tight, um, it gives me the marching ants, they call it. Uh, and so I know that that's a great selection. I might actually also keep a little bit of the cape for this just because I don't know how much from another picture I'm going to need. So I'm going to steal a little bit of this cape. And if you can see that, it took some of stuff I don't want. Um, it grabbed some of his armor on his chest and I just want his cape. So what I'm gonna do I'm going to hold down my Alt or Option key, and it, if you can see that very close in, um, it for the, my tool, it gives me a plus right now, which means that whatever I click on, it's going to add to the selection, and if I hold down Alt, it's going to subtract. So, holding down Alt or Option, I'm going to hit up all this armor that I didn't want in the first place. Sometimes it takes a little bit of toggling back and forth, um, and sometimes it just won't pick up what you want at all. Uh, which is a little unfortunate, but it helps in the long run. Cool. So now I have my helmet and his neck and the cape uh, all in the marching ants zone. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the mask tool and it's just going to take what was in the selection, which is great. Um, you can see over here it has this mask on it right now. This is the layer, this is the mask, um, and I'm going to clean it up a little bit by using uh, the black and white in a paintbrush. 
And I didn't realize this until a couple years ago. I'm, I'm still kind of a newbie at Photoshop, um, but I just got familiar with masks um, within the last few years and it's all about what is in the black space or what's in the white space in the mask. Black will cover up whatever you don't want to see and white will bring it back. So it's a nice way to not erase a photo. I was doing that for a very long time and I realized that if I erased too much and moved on to another part of the picture but wanted some back, oh, it was not fun. You'd have to import the photo again and redo it all over. Um, but this you can keep, the whole photo is still there, it's just hidden. So I'm going to make sure, um, if I hit D, it's a shortcut to get the white and black uh, default colors. Then if I hit X, I automatically get the black color to come, the background color to come to the foreground color. So I am just going to, I'm going to make sure that my opacity is up, that my flow is up, and I'm just going to cover up what I don't want sweet and later I can make sure that this is all that people see I can get rid of the rest of it so this isn't a massive Photoshop file um, but as of right now this is all I want I'm gonna hang out right there with it until I decide that I need it so there's that moving on to the next layer this was actually a screenshot that I grabbed from the um, it's like the behind the scenes special effects stuff that Disney posted on Disney Plus. Um, and this is a little more complicated. When it comes to selecting a photo, colors that are similar tend, um, I mean, when, when I'm using that wand tool, like I said, it'll select similar colors grouped together. But if they're so close, um, it might be a little more difficult. We'll get in here with a brush in a second. But um, this was a really cool little blip in the behind the scenes portion. Um, and I know for this one, I'm going to use his legs. So instead of using the wand tool right away, I'm going to use the lasso tool to quickly uh, grab just a small portion of this photo. I'm obviously not using anything on the left half. Um, I just want his legs. So I'm going to take the lasso tool I'm just gonna make a selection in the area I want. It gives me this area. I can mask it off right away. Bam. Now I am going to zoom in a bit and I'm going to, um, let's see if the wand tool works. You can use the um, bracket keys to, oh, see, it's getting a little bit in there. But you can change the size of the brush, uh, just like the paintbrush. It's not doing a bad job. Cool, okay, so there's still some stuff in there that I don't necessarily want. I'm gonna try to use that option key, and it kind of closes in on it pretty well. I don't need this cape portion. But I do want that armor. So here it's going to fight me a little bit. Um, but that's okay. It got most of what I needed. Uh, yeah, everything looks pretty cool. So now that I already made a mask, um, if you try to make a mask again, it will, but it won't select from your picture unless, let's see if you do this. Yep, no, it just makes another mask. Um, which is kind of interesting and I'm not quite sure why you would need multiple masks, but I will learn that someday. Um, right here, since I have what I want selected uh, in the marching ants, I'm actually going to, instead of just taking that, I'm going to get rid of everything else. So I'm going to hold down Shift and Command and I, and that chooses the inverse. So you still see the marching ants around his legs, but you'll also notice that there are marching ants around the entire document, and that's because it has taken just the opposite. Um, it has gotten all everything on the outside of that initial line now, instead of everything inside it. So all I'm gonna do is I'm going to hold down Option and Delete, making sure that I'm on my mask area, and that will fill in the entire space with the black color. I'm going to control or command D and that's going to get rid of my marching ants. And then I can go back in with my paintbrush and just get rid of the little bits that are there. 
I know for a fact that I want these legs to be quite bigger than they are. So if you notice, when I go to use the transform tool, it still grabs the entire picture because I haven't gotten rid of that yet. That's all under the mask, which is fine for right now. It's kind of better also to change the shape of whatever's inside, um, what's in the mask or what's, you know, what's part of this original picture uh, before you rasterize it because once you rasterize it, it kind of locks in the pixels. I don't know what the official terminology is, but I do know that if you try to enlarge it or minimize it, make it smaller, um, it's the pixels are gonna get a little wonky. So this also preserves the quality of the pixels. So I have his legs now, great. I'm going to, and as I go, I should probably be doing this. So I'm gonna label this layer, the legs. And I'm going to label this layer, helmet. Awesome, so now we've got a good portion of him done already. For this picture, this was a screenshot also, I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to take his upper arms, his cape again, because I want to make sure that I have some overlap between the helmet picture and this picture. I'm going to take his chest armor, um, and it'll probably grab his arms, uh, his lower arm right here too, um, but that's all I'm going to grab. So, trying the wand tool again. Nice how it snaps to certain parts of the picture um, so you don't have to fill it in like you might with like a paintbrush. Not bad. Oh. Can you tell I'm in Midwestern? Oop. Uh. Okay, not too bad. Again, um, I don't have to be so precise up at the helmet because I already have my helmet photo, but I do want as much of the cape as I can get, as much of the armor as I can get, um, and as much of his upper arms as I can get. Beautiful. Mask that. Nice. Go to my mask, use the brush tool, get rid of any excess that I might not want. Um, in reverse, if you know that there's some stuff that the wand tool missed, you can flip your colors and paint over it and you will get that beautiful uh, edge, let's say, because this didn't pick it up right away. Um, or you can even use it. Sometimes I leave a little bit of the background in there so I know just exactly where my line is especially if an object has a, a really bright sheen on it. Um, if it's matching the background, uh, you really wanna know where the end is uh, for that part of your picture. Cool. Sweet. So that is his upper half and that's going to be, I'm going to call that his shoulders because that's what I'm going to use them most for, I think. All right, this one's a little tough. Um, I think I might just, I think I'm going to grab his torso for sure, his belt area and his thighs. I don't need the helmet but I'm also going to grab his shoulders and I will show you later why I need the overlap so much. Uh, but for this one particularly, we are going to um, just kind of try to just get rid of the background. And so, wand at the ready. This one should be a little bit easier because there's such a contrast between the background and the foreground. And side note, um, just so that you guys know, I did take some of these photographs that I found into Lightroom beforehand. I definitely, so this one looks super pixelated in the background um, because I definitely had to lighten some of them up 
Um, it's more of a help for me later when I'm trying to do all the tiny details and such in the drawing. Um, and sometimes it definitely helps like when you bring it into Photoshop with your wand tool, it will definitely help subtract the foreground or the background from the foreground um, or whatever your subject may be. Oops. Okay, so you can see where it looks like it's shiny and bright, but that wasn't supposed to happen. So I need to go back in and grab that and grab this. Make sure that's all in there. Try this again. Nope. Sometimes you just don't see it. Okay, cool. I think that's everything. So that worked out pretty well. Um, I can go in here and try to get rid of just this tiny bit of background. Nice. Alrighty. We're on a roll. I'm gonna call this his torso. Sweet. For this one, I just want this arm with the shoulder plate. <laughs> and that's what'll happen if you're not on the right layer. Mm, okay, so this one, because the color of the gun is so similar to the background color, it's going to grab a lot of that. I'm going to do this again. I'm going to grab my white brush. And I'm just going to kind of hit up the edges just so I make sure that I get it all. I can always go back in, kind of get rid of what I don't need. But I'd rather err on the side of extra and have more to begin with than missing part of it. Alright, this is going to be his right arm. And for this one, I am going to just take his For this one, I'm just going to take his, in the picture, it's his right arm. Um, I'm going to end up reversing it later, but let's see how this works. Not too bad, until you try to get to the edges. That's a bummer. That's okay. Oops. So since I'm going to reverse it later, this is going to be his left arm. Alright, so we have all of these layers right now and it looks a little chaotic. So we're going to put them all where they're supposed to go. Let's see. What I'm going to do, I mentioned that I have some photos for reference. And so I'm actually going to take 
this image and I'm going to bring it in uh, to the document. And that's gonna be my reference image for size to make sure that as I'm resizing all of these images, that one, they're going to all fit. They're not going to be, you know, his legs aren't gonna be super large and his head isn't gonna be super small. Um, so this is my reference image. This is actually a picture of uh, the D, is it the D23 Expo? Uh, so I think this is his original outfit, which is really cool. It's not necessary that I cut him out, but for the sake of not getting things, oops, um, for the sake of not getting other things kind of mixed in with the background, I'm going to just do a really rough outline. Um, and I'm, yeah, I'm gonna actually even, I can do a very simple, just with the brush, Maybe I'm lazy, maybe I'm not. All right, cool. So this will give me a better idea when I'm resizing how everything, how proportional everything should be. Sweet. So he's just gonna hang out here. <laughs> Hand poking out. All right, so from the very beginning, I'm going to take this helmet and I want to resize it to be the size of this model that I have here. I'm going to make it transparent. I think that's versus, I always get translucent and transparent mixed up. Maybe it's translucent. I think it's translucent. So not completely see-through, but a little bit, um, I can see it a little bit. So <clears throat> on these two objects, granted his helmet isn't something that's going to morph shape. Um, it's going to stay fairly rigid. It's going to stay, you know, it's not like it bends in any way. It doesn't, it doesn't fold with his body. It's going to stay as it is. And so what's really cool about this is that since there are lines to reference on both of these images, I'm going to take one, I'm going to take the one that I want, and I'm going to match it to this one via this line right here. Um, I'm going to just highlight it really quick. I'm going to use this line right here as a reference point. So taking his helmet, I'm going to use my transform tool and I'm going to match up the corner in the very top. And now you can see that some of this hangs over. I've got some space here, so I definitely need to make it a little bit smaller. All right, a little too much. A little bit closer. All right, now that's pretty spot on. When I overlap them, I can see that they match pretty closely. And it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. Um, none of this is going to be. But it gives me an idea that if I have this helmet this size and I make a shoulder piece this size according to my reference photo, they're most likely going to be in proportion as long as his positioning is relatively the same. So, my helmet is where I need it to be right now. Pretty cool. Don't want to do that yet. Now, let's move on to his shoulders. Oops. <laughs> that's what you what that's what happens when you take a photo and you grab uh, not only the layer, you grab the stuff inside the mask, which is not uh, what we want to do. We want to grab the whole thing. Ah, that's cuz they're not linked. I must have hit something earlier. So I'm gonna get rid of the helmet portion. I'm going to make this guy, I'm gonna bring down the opacity. And I'm, for this section, um, because I have his newer armor in 
I want to do this whole picture in his his newer armor. Um, what I'm going to try to match it up with is the chest plate. I'm figuring that it's not too different and I, I will have other images that I can bring in. Actually, I do have one other one. And I believe... It was this one. This has his entire body on it. I can use this as a reference point for a whole bunch of stuff. This is what I'm going to use. Apologies. So before I change his shoulders, I'm going to make sure that this picture is similar to my other reference photo. Again, I'm going to use that helmet. It's a little bit of a different angle, so I have to be careful. Um, and this is, so the difference between these two is that this one is a miniature replica. I believe it's like a 1 25th scale or 1 16th scale replica. This is the actual costume. So it's gonna be a little bit different, but just to get it in the size range, um, that's what I'm gonna try for. So, let's zoom in. I'm going to match up this inner corner right here with this inner corner right here. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. A little too big. Alright, so looking at what's happening right now, I can see other parts of the toy model that are definitely becoming way too large. And that's okay. Um, so the helmets might not be exactly the same, but it will give me reference um, to other things. So looking at, let's say, let's match up the top of his, um, his shoulder armor. And if you see how far his hand goes down, granted he's in a walking pose for this one and it's just, it's very statuesque in the first photo, um, it's different. The sizes of, even though those lines don't match up on the helmet, the sizes of the, um, you know, the, the stuff that he's got across his chest, his belt is a little bit bigger, just a fraction. Um, the armor is a little bit bigger, granted it's new, but there are things that stay the same. Um, so like his hands are much bigger. Um, I'm not sure if we go down, his feet are already much bigger and the boots didn't change when he got his armor. So this is gonna be a little tricky. Um, however, let's try to go with the overall shape of the helmet then, the overall size instead of just this particular line. So if I match up the very top ridge Let's try to make that smaller and see what happens. All right, so the top ridge and the bottom of the helmet are matching up right now. You can see the points at the bottom. If I line up this ridge, it's pretty darn close. So comparing again their hands, that's much closer than how I had it before. The belt is much closer. Um, so I think I will stick with this one. Um, now that I've kind of got a reference between the two of what the differences are, I can adjust based on which picture I'm using as a reference. Yeah, that's much better. So now that I have two reference photos, I'm going to call this one Alright I'm going to get rid of this guy, bring this guy back up And now I'm going to try to match those shoulders So we have a different, a couple different things we can do for this one. I think I'm going to try to match up 
the size of the shoulder armor and my second reference point will be this um, right in the middle of his chest armor uh, this kind of insignia so if I match a corner on the top of the armor does it line up with the bottom it's pretty close and then moving in to this symbol in the middle that that's pretty darn close as well um, later we can do some checks simply by looking at the photo from far away um, to kind of get the idea of if everything looks proportional um, but I think this is pretty good for right now so I'm gonna leave that guy we can do a really quick test by simply putting the helmet and the shoulders together And actually, I'm gonna do this now. I know that I'm gonna have him facing the other way, and because there is no super significant um, logos or anything on this helmet, I can just reverse it, and nobody's gonna know the difference. All right. Okay, so here's where, well, I'll get into this more later, but you can see why I have the extra cape here to make sure that when we overlay stuff, I might need a little bit of his neck in this picture, but not in the other picture. Um, but we're getting, we're getting close here, we're getting close. It might be a little bit bigger. Actually, it's a lot bigger. However, I know that both of these are from the show so I'm gonna make the shoulders as large as the helmet. Executive decision. Um, and what I'm gonna do is since I have that helmet piece here, I'm gonna bring this on top so I can see the overlay. I'm going to match up these lines on the helmet. So yeah, there's quite a difference there. This makes me feel a little bit better knowing that they're both from the show. I'm not comparing a toy to a costume uh, and the angles aren't um, incredibly different. Like he's not looking up, which would foreshorten the length of this line right here. Um, I can use this as a pretty good sign. Make it a little bit larger. Great, awesome. Bring this back up to opacity. Put it behind the helmet. I think that looks a little more proportional. I know the cape is in the way, but I think just looking at the width of his shoulders and the helmet, I think that's better. So we're gonna, those are our top two layers right now. Those gone. Legs, we're gonna skip the legs right now. We're going to go to the torso. Now, this is also from the show. So, in terms of aligning it with the other photos that we have, I'm going to bring out this shoulder piece and I'm going to make the torso fit the shoulder piece. And the point for me is going to be this, um, this decoration in the middle again, and maybe even the belt. However, before I do that, I do want to point out that the line of action in both of these characters or both of these pictures is severely different. Um, maybe not severely, but it's different enough to know that we're gonna have to shift things and warp things later to make it look like it's all one piece. So, in the shoulder photo, his line of action, his line of movement is incredibly straight. He's got, it's just straight through, um, there's not much curve to it at all, 
there's nothing, no twisting happening. Um, it's just straight up and down. His spine is very straight. In this one, he's walking, and when everyone walks, they have a different swagger. If you notice, your opposite leg and your arm will go forward at the same time, and vice versa when you walk. Um, your hips kind of dip on different sides, as do your shoulders. So we've got just the tiniest bit of uh, tilt here. His hips, one is higher than the other, and his shoulders are the opposite on the same side. In addition to that, his chest, the alignment of his chest is here, and his hips go a little. So there is a continuous line that goes down, but it, it shifts a little bit. It curves in a different direction. If you were to exaggerate this, it might almost be like this. He's not like that, but the idea that his shield is not vertical, like not super straight up and down like this other picture, he's got this tilt to it. So you can see it's got a little bit of this curve to it. And then his hips, because they're dipped, one is lower and one is closer, so there's a, a change in that. So, knowing that, taking these images, I'm going to have to take it with a grain of salt a little bit and kind of get to a happy medium instead of making it fit exactly right now. So like I said, I'm going to take this decorative piece in the middle as my guide to begin with. I have a feeling that's not something that shifts much or moves much. And what I'm going to do is because these are two, these are two different angles, I'm going to rotate one a little bit just to get them to be the same angle right now. And looking at it, it doesn't line up quite as much as I'd like, so we're going to change that. All right. Okay, so looking at it right now, I think I've already changed my mind actually. Instead of using that piece, I think I'm going to use, there's like an upside down chevron pattern in between the top and the bottom of his chest armor. I think I'm going to use that a little bit more as a reference. So this is far too big compared to the shoulder piece. I was wondering why I was making it bigger. Still too big. And sometimes this will not work exactly as you want it to. You might have to go back and forth quite a bit um, between images just to get, you know, a solid picture that you're looking for. Um, so right now, this chevron pattern, I mean, the top might be aligned. I'm looking at other lines too. I'm looking at this sharp edge right here, trying to get that to line up with its with the buddy on the shoulder picture. Um, the signet in the middle is not matching up. The top of his chest is not matching up. It's going to be some tricky decision making. However, I know that I don't necessarily need the top of the torso. I already have that with the shoulders. I kind of wanted to use this upside down chevron picture to get as close as I could with the bottom to make sure that that was proportional. However, I'm probably only going to be using the bottom half. All right, so if I had to make that decision, I'm not gonna use the belt going across his chest because that can shift. I'm gonna try to use the armor to line up as much as possible. So where this chevron is, if I put it there, I do get this line like I was talking about. I do get this connection between where his waist lines up uh, on both pictures, although yeah, that lines up pretty nice. 
Um, he is twisted again, so this is not gonna line up right away. As you see, his, his torso is over here when in this picture it should be over here, or it is over there. I'm gonna have to move it. This inverted triangular trapezoidal piece um, comes out to over here. So I'm gonna get as close as I can using, I think I'm gonna use this middle, this chevron and these two lines and that's gonna be kind of my, um, my match. Um, and I will show you how to adjust this in a bit, but I think at the moment it's okay. These lines match up. The chevron is close. It's not perfect, but it's close. And I'm just gonna leave it like that. But then again, when I turn it off, it looks too small. Let's... We're gonna make it a little bit bigger. And sometimes that's just the decision that you get to make. I know his belt does not match up right now. I know the lines aren't perfect, but we will shift those in a little bit. It is close, and that's what I'm gonna accept for right now. All right. Now, okay, I have helmet, I have shoulders, I have torso. I really want to get the torso down before I work on the legs. That wouldn't be so great if we fit the leg to the torso and then realize we had to adjust it. It's not hard, um, but it just, I feel like I want to get this down before I move on. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna match this up as much as possible. Or till I'm satisfied. I'm gonna turn off the helmet layer. And I'm gonna start making adjustments, um, physical adjustments to this layer. I have it right now. I know for a fact that I'm not gonna need the helmet, I'm not gonna need the shoulders, and I'm not gonna need the arms. I'm going to erase them. So I'm gonna put them in this mask. I'm gonna cover them up um, with my brush tool. I'm gonna to get rid of this. I don't need it. I'm going to get rid of the shoulders. I'm gonna get rid of the arms. I'm gonna keep his holster right there. I'm gonna keep this curve. All right, so this is what I got. Torso and waist. I'm going to bring out that shoulder layer. I'm going to rasterize the torso layer. I've gotten rid of what I don't need, and I'm going to, it's a little bit scary, but I'm going to rasterize it, which means that I don't have um, the ability to change its size much anymore uh, without preserving the pixels. Um, and I'm also going to apply the layer mask. So now, if I look at this picture, it's just what's here. There's no hidden photo behind it. There's nothing else. Um, like I said, it's a little bit scary, but it is going to help me. I can't move this in any other way, any other way that I know um, until it's rasterized. So, I have this here. I'm going to put it on top again, and I'm going to make it transparent. And what I'm gonna do now, we're gonna warp it a little bit. So I want to try to get, I think, my main goal is going to be to line up the armor as much as possible um, so that the transition below this line is readable and understandable. So just double checking. 
yeah, I'm gonna need to widen it up a little bit. All right, so I'm going to control T to get my transform box and I'm going to warp it. Um, be careful when using this tool, things can go sideways pretty quickly. Um, little bit, you can go little bit by little bit, um, but sometimes going over, you can definitely tell when you go overboard. So I'm gonna grab these anchor um, points that they have and you'll notice it literally just warps the image um, and I'm gonna bring this out a little bit to try to match this torso line. In addition, I know that his torso kind of ends over here and I'm going to bring this one in a little bit. Cause I really want that to match. Okay. We're getting a little bit closer. Granted, his belt doesn't line up right now, um, but some of the other things are starting to get there. So, opacity. Let's see, so this trapezoidal figure, if I move it out of the way, it's not exactly where I need it to be. It needs to be a little bit lower. Um, I think I need to line this up a little bit better too. So I'm gonna go back into that warp. Now I'm gonna grab from the middle. It's going to affect the way the outer line is. I can bring that back in. And if you notice, it kind of nudges the whole picture. So you are gonna to have to go back and forth a little bit, but it will get you closer to what you need. Getting a little bit closer. I think what I'm gonna do now is work on the hips section. I don't necessarily wanna have that curve that I did. You can see that this line is starting to shape up right here. His belt is getting a little bit closer. Um, I'm kinda, I'm liking it. Doesn't have to be perfect, but I'm liking it. Oops. Bring this up a little bit. Bring this out. That's pretty close. Close enough to where I'm satisfied at the moment. And I think I'm gonna leave it. Um, because I am done with this portion, I can get rid of a little bit more of the top of the torso. So for this, I can just go in and use my eraser tool because we have rasterized the image. Cool. I'm gonna bring that back underneath. It's looking Looking all right. Looking all right. <coughs> the legs. All right, so now let's bring the torso back up to full opacity. Let's focus on these legs. And I know that I took the warp to a little bit too far. Um, it it kind of dragged out his leg in a weird, funky fashion. Um, I can also go in and think I'm going to go in. I'll show you guys the liquify tool right now really quick. Um, it's just another way to kind of nudge things around without distorting them too terribly. Um, and what you do is you collect your layer, you hit liquify, 
and then I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to kind of try to rebalance this shift in his weight right here. So what I can do um, is I'm using a, it's called a forward warp tool. It's just kind of like a nudge, um, but it, it a little bit of a smaller area when picking up parts of the image compared to the warp tool. So you can kind of really hone in and focus in on certain parts of the picture. Um, so I'm trying to make his belt uh, as straightforward as possible. Maybe not perfectly, because uh, I know he's going to have a step in his gait when I make the final picture, but it's just enough to kind of like nudge things around. Do I like it? Not exactly. And we learn. Um, I'm going to leave this for the moment and I'm going to come back to it, but I can move on to my legs. Legs. All right. I know that I want to use these legs and I want to sync them up as much as possible with what I have already. However, I know that they're too big right off the bat. Okay, I'm going to turn off that layer. I'm going to, again, line up these images. I think the closest in terms of this picture where things match up the best um, is if I can imagine this line up here that would come across, it would should and it should match up with this line. I can also try to this one, but it's a little bit, eh, it's probably really close. Um, so I'm going to, again, make the opacity. Nope. Alrighty. Another thing, since I have it here, is the belt. Um, I can kind of use that as a reference as well, and um, this part of his armor or whatever under layer that is, his tunic, if you will, um, I've got a whole bunch of lines that I can reference that would help me. And because this angle is not the same, so again, he is stepping forward with his right foot in this picture, he is doing the same in this other one, but the back legs are completely different now that I've warped the torso layer. But let's see, let's start off with the belt. Let's see what happens. Matching the belt, that's really close. I think the torso and his legs be just slightly larger. Maybe not. So I think I appreciate the torso picture more than the leg picture, only because the armor is the newer armor in the torso photo. So let's get these legs underneath this one. Another thing too is the holster. You can try, that's 
pretty darn close. It's a little bit big. Another small thing to think about is um, I can change the texture and the color of these um, these two armor pieces on his legs, and I might just do that because the torso piece I can use it almost as an edge. So let's bring his legs up. If I got rid of the bottom of that torso piece, I can kind of use this as a reference as well. Yeah, because that like kind of almost perfectly fits in right here. Granted, there's the, um, the holster in the way, but like that's not terrible. I'm kind of okay with this. I mean, if I set that there, granted I'll bring it a little bit lower because I don't like how high the leg armor was sitting. I can do that. And I know I have a whole bunch of seams that aren't matching up right now. I know that in the leg photo, you know, he's got this part of a tunic that's underneath the armor. Um, but I can get rid of that later, either while I'm drawing, if you feel comfortable with that, or I can take a, uh, what's called the stamp tool and I can kind of get rid of it in a little bit too. I think right now I'm going to leave it. We're getting close, guys. Like, this is not the worst looking thing. Let's bring up those reference photos again, just for the sake of imagery. All right, so simply bringing it to the same height. That is pretty darn close. I think the only thing I'm struggling with really is this middle torso area. Although, if you look at the lines, if you were to draw a straight line, okay, so let's match up the torso, the helmet. I'm sorry, the helmet. If I put the top of the helmet right there. Look at how close the shoulders are. Look at where the elbows are. Look at where the belt is laying. Look at where the bottom of this tunic is. The tops of the legs are a little bit different because he's in different positioning, but also the tops of this. Like, we are pretty darn close, you guys. I'm okay with this image um, with the legs. This one is in the foreground. It's stepping towards us, so it's going to be a little bit bigger um, and vice versa with this other leg. I think I just have to finagle that torso bit a smidge. Let's warp this again, slightly. <laughs> I don't have much of an issue with that. Cool. Okay. Yeah, I think that's okay right now. Sweet! Alright, let's get rid of the reference image. I have one more picture, I think, for his... Oh, we need that arm. We've got this arm. Um, we can't forget Baby Yoda. We can't forget the rest of his foot. So... I believe that I used the... But in this picture, yep. Yeah. So I'm gonna use my lasso tool really quick, mask it off. Um, since this is so big and it's such a trivial part of the picture, like his foot is important, yes, but it's kind of trivial, I'm going to rasterize it and mask it right now so I'm not moving around this massive photo. I can go in and I can do stuff in a moment, but.
All right. Again, if you'll notice, the the tilt on his foot here is in a downward arc, and in here it's an upward arc. So I'm going to use um, my you know manipulation tools to try to match that as much as possible. For this one, I'm going to start off with a warp, and then I might use the liquify tool. What am I moving? Ah. It's locked. I guess it is locked. I must have hit the button. There we go. Um, so let's warp this first a little bit. And I'm going to go right in and grab that part and bring it down. But you know what? That just ends up smushing the rest of his foot and I'm not a big fan of that. So forget that noise. Uh, we're gonna escape from that. I'm going to bring it into the liquify. All right, and I'm going to minimize this and I'm just going to grab a little bit in the middle and bring it down. I'm gonna grab the sides gonna kind of do this back and forth thing it's not perfect no tool is I want that arc to be a little bit different cool make this transparent Smidge bigger. All right, and you guys may be looking at this right now and saying, like, this is incredibly haphazard. It doesn't look pretty. It doesn't look, you know, it looks kind of ugly. Just, it looks like a ransom letter almost. Um, but what we're gonna do in a little bit is we're gonna change the color tones of everything. We're gonna add some shadows. Um, we can match up things a little bit better so that they look more cohesive. And then when I take it onto the canvas anyways, the, the fact that I'm using one medium to make it all look the same, it's gonna have, it's gonna look a little more bound together, a little more like an original picture. Um, based on the colors I use and where I use them and how I fix seams and stuff like that. We're gonna save this right now just so that I can uh, keep saving. Don't forget to save, friends. All right, I think I have enough of his boot back here. Yeah, it's a little cut off, but I'm gonna leave it the way it is. Um, guys, this is looking pretty good, pretty good. Um, in my head, maybe it doesn't look good to you, but at the same time, all I need is a reference to draw, and then it's gonna, my picture hopefully will look really cool. Um, another thing, I know that I wanna change, while we're working on his, his bottom half, I know that this is like, it's two pieces right now, and I'm not gonna have to switch it too much, but I'm just gonna bind those together um, ooh, but if I do that, I have to rasterize the legs, which I'm not ready to do yet, so forget that. Um, let's work on his arms really quick, and then we're going to start manipulating his whole posture to be exactly what we want. So, I'm going to... I know that I'm not going to be using these arms. I have different... Well, I might use this one a little bit. Um, I have different a, different... a shooting arm for this guy. So which is this one. I'm gonna bring it all the way to the top. Looking at it right away, it's not too far from being the size we need it to be, which is great. I'm gonna get rid of the helmet layer. Basing it off of his arm that's in there, if we were to rotate this, the width of his arm here is almost exactly the width of his arm here. Maybe a little bit smaller. It's 
pretty darn close. Maybe I didn't need to make it smaller. Pretty good. I like that. Now, I know that I want him to be shooting with his right arm. I know I want it over here. I know I want it pointing up a little bit. However, I don't need what's on the end of this because I want this piece and I will manipulate that in a little bit, but to get this as close as possible to where it would be on his actual body to make it anatomically correct of the way that you would lift yourself have a little bit of this armor piece from the old armor that I can kind of match it up with. And I'm not going to go too high. I'm going to bring it out a little bit. Cool. Oh, and look at, look at that line right there. Um, I'm going to, to turn off that layer really quickly and what I'm going to do for the shoulders, I'm going to get rid of this arm because I don't need it right now. And I'm just doing this in the mask tool again. I'm gonna grab the lasso tool and I'm gonna grab this shoulder piece. Control T, ooh, I haven't done this yet either. Okay, so forget that. I have to go back. Um, if I look at the shoulder layer, I don't think I'm gonna be using anything else. I think what's there is really good and it's a great starting place for me. I'm going to rasterize this layer. I'm going to apply the layer mask and then I'm going to take the lasso tool. I'm gonna to grab this, control T, and I know that this shoulder piece wouldn't go very far. It's only gonna go where his shoulder goes. So I'm going to move, this is an anchor point and if I decide to rotate the whole thing, it's going to rotate around that anchor point. Just like that. How cool. In addition to that, I'm probably going to move it just a little bit up because his shoulder would push it up. And we're going to hit enter and control D to get rid of the marching ants. And let's see if we put this underneath. It's not too far off. Looking at this, I think he's a little, it's a little bit too close in. Uh, his arm is, his shoulder looks like it's almost like pulled back a little bit. So we're gonna stretch him out. We're gonna put him up here. And we're gonna bring it up a little bit. And that matches a little bit closer. So now that I have that underneath our shoulder layer, I can get rid of this other armor that's in there that I don't need anymore. And I actually, I think, I think I'm gonna bring that shoulder piece back in a little bit. So I'm gonna go right back to his shoulders. I'm going to lasso tool. And be careful when you use the lasso tool. Whatever you are clipping, whatever I'm clicking and dragging, I'm taking a piece away from what was and it it goes with it and that's a permanent change. You cannot get that back. So be careful when you're going around. I know that I don't really need that little fraction, but just like I said, be careful when you go through um, and move things because that's kind of a permanent change. In addition, when I want to move this, I know that I want it to be underneath his cape. So I'm actually going to erase just a smidge of this front piece. right there. Cool. So now I put it in and it's part of that picture. Or it's part of that layer. And if I take it off again, I'm getting rid of whatever's underneath it. Sweet. Um, let's take the right arm. I think, you know, I think what we're looking at is good. Just a little rotation and that brings kind of this fabric in so there's not a white gap in there, which is great. 
also, I can use, actually, I might need to send it out a little bit more. Um, looking at where the shoulder armor fits on this hand or this arm, it comes up kind of like, almost like mid, for, um, mid upper arm, uh, right? Kind of just to protect like the deltoid, maybe a little bit lower. And so I think that looking at this is his elbow right in here, this, this bulge right here. And so I think it would get pushed down a little bit um, if he raised his arm up. And so I think having it kind of in here is not terrible. Um, I will now have to fill in this space right here, but I can do that once I rasterize the layer. And I'm going to do that right now. I think I'm good with everything that's cropped along the side of it. So I can rasterize it and I can apply the mask. I'm going to take the stamp tool, which is S for a shortcut. And if you haven't used this before, it's a great tool. Um, I use it when I have to take off grid lines for a lot of things. But basically, if you hold down the Alt key and you click on a portion of your picture uh, and then let go, and you move to a different part of your layer and you start drawing, um, granted, I don't have the opacity up all the way. It's going to copy and paste that portion of whatever you're painting. Really cool. Um, if I want to, it's it's a lot to drag like the texture. Um, sometimes, depending on the opacity that you have, you can just kind of click and drag texture. Um, but it literally just kind of like copy paste. Um, I like it though because I have a better control versus copying a large blob and trying to fit it into a, a very slim piece. So that's why I like using this brush. You can kind of just go in, fill it in. Granted, this is not picture perfect by any means, um, but it will help me just create a little bit more stuff here um, that I can fix later. Doesn't look terrible, but it's uh, definitely not final photo ready. Okay, we are getting closer, you guys. Right arm is done. We're gonna get his left arm in there and I'm going to get rid of what's here on the shoulder piece. I'm gonna leave his upper arm in here, but I do have this piece down here that I'm immediately going to rotate. I'm making it his left hand. And I'm going to associate it with this other hand. I'm going to... Too big. Not terrible. Pretty good. All right, um, again, I don't think I need anything else on the outside, so I'm going to rasterize this layer and apply that. So now I have this little guy, and it's, if, when I go to transform it, there must be something down here, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to lasso around just the arm, uh, just the arm. I'm going to Command-Shift-I, and I'm gonna delete, and that should give me that, perfect. All right. If anyone wants a um, anatomy reference, usually your elbow comes in and it lines up, the bottom of your elbow lines up pretty darn close with your belly button. Um, so looking at this picture, this might need to be a little bit bigger. Maybe not that big. Um, I'm assuming that Mandalorian's belly button lays right about here. So I can put the bottom of his elbow around there. Cool. You guys, we're getting close. <clears throat> Sweet. Okay. Now that we have head, let's get this helmet in here. Um, similarly, I'm going to get rid of most of the cape. I don't think I need it anymore. And I know I want to 
lean his head in towards the action. Just a smidge. that lines up so cool okay we're getting there sweet next I think we need to add a baby Yoda do I have everything labeled first of all okay so this is the foot I have two photos of Baby Yoda, one for the top half, which is going to be this guy, and then one for the bottom half. Top half, let's go in. I should have lightened this picture up a little bit. I might go back in uh, to Lightroom and take care of that later, but as of right now, let's collect Baby Yoda. And again, because these are these pictures, oh gosh. So here I'm having quite a bit of difficulty just getting Baby Yoda. Um, because it's so dark and that's where you really want that contrast to pop in. Yeah, I might just have to go in with a brush for this. Oh, that's a little bit better. It's as good as I'm gonna get with that guy. So brush time, kind of come in here. Cool. Isn't he cute? Sweet. Awesome. Um, gonna lighten him up just a little bit right now. A little hard to see him and if you notice everything in the picture is being uh, brightened up but I don't want that actually I'm gonna lessen the contrast I'm going to hold down the alt key and click right above the layer I want it to be on which is a baby Yoda and I'm going to combine the two with the control E and that automatically rasteri rasterizes it so I'm going to grab him and he's gonna hang out with Mr. Mandalorian. Just looking at the fingers and Baby Yoda, it kind of looks like he's holding on to something, but it doesn't, it's not great. Um, I'm gonna smash these fingers in a little bit with the liquify tool. So we're gonna click on that. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to bring this forward. I'm going to bring these guys in and I'm going to curl them up a little bit. Just because this is pixelated doesn't mean my photo is going to come out pixelated when I do the picture. So as long as you can draw with reference that's a little bit grainy, it might take you really far. At least to adjust the things you feel need adjusting. Okay, that's a little bit better, I think. Cool. Um, now I'm going to grab the bottom of Baby Yoda. And I 
just want this sack portion that he's wearing, this little potato sack. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use my lasso tool again. Boop, boop. And I don't need the rest, I know that for a fact, so I'm going to rasterize it and apply. And then I'm just gonna erase. Again, this portion doesn't need to be super precise. Cool. Make it a little bit smaller. I'm gonna make sure that it's under this arm. He's not that big. That's not bad. Cool. And what I'm going to do is, um, in that picture, it very much looked like he was standing. All the lines in this sack uh, reflect that. And so I'm going to go in with the liquify tool. This is the baby Yoda bottom. Um, and I'm going to nudge all those lines in a direction to make them look like they are being tugged up um, by Mr. Mandalorian. So I'm going to make my brush kind of big. I'm going to just sweep them, sweep the top of them in uh, to the left and then the bottom is going to kind of flare out to the right and drop a little bit. This creates a sense of movement, um, and it looks like he's really holding him. In addition to that, there's also this bloat tool, and I'm gonna make it just, if you hold it, click it and hold it, it kind of brings out, it makes it like kind of fisheye, whatever you're trying to do. Um, so I do that at the bottom just to make it look a little puffier. Nice, not bad. Save. Okay. Awesome. I think we are ready to start moving some more things around. Similar to how I did his hand up here. In the first picture that I did, I really liked the idea that this line of action should be really strong. Um, it was all about wanting this to be a curve. Uh, and so I think I'm gonna try to emulate that by moving the legs around a little bit and tilting him as well. So let's go back to this guy. What we've gotta do now, I think. Okay, so in comparison, it's a little bit hard to see because of the angle, but I know that I straightened out his right leg and I definitely tucked his left leg back. And things are a little bit different. Um, I, of course, I didn't place everything exactly the same. Um, maybe I'll go back and look at them in a little bit just to see which versions I like more. Um, I can definitely feel more in this photo. Granted, it's also a finished or it's closer to be finished uh, than this one, but let's try to get there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to rasterize his legs. Um, and actually, before I do that, I'm going to make a copy because I know that I want to manipulate his legs separately. So for the first one, I'm going to close off that second layer. And for the first one, I'm going to kind of highlight one of the legs and I'm gonna fill it in with black so that I have the other leg. So as soon as I rasterize this and apply the layer, this has become just his right leg. And then this guy, I'm going to do the opposite. So on the mask layer, I'm going to uh, lasso and I'm going to grab the right leg and I'm going to fill it in. And now I just have this guy and I can boop, do that a little bit. Awesome. Rasterize this and apply it. Bam, this is my left leg. 
right leg, left leg, sweet. In this, I, like I said, I think I straightened this out and I pulled this one back. So I'm gonna do the left leg first, I think. Um, it's pretty darn simple. I rotated it out a little bit, but I wanna make sure that all this is coming back. So I'm gonna bring it back in here. And there's stuff on the other side that I can get rid of. Um, but I kind of want to keep it. I can bring this up here. Remember this anchor tool? Let's do that. Let's see how that helps. That's nice. That gives us a little bit of this, this curve that we want. Sweet. Um, I'm also going to erase whatever this is over here, that remnants. And now I'm going to take the right leg. I want it more like he's stepping. So I'm gonna, instead of like a hesitant or a mid-step, I'm going to straighten this out. And now I'm actually, okay, so now that I rasterize the leg, I'm gonna connect this foot so that every time I move the leg, the foot moves with it. So Command E, and that's all part of the right leg. We're gonna warp this guy a little bit instead. I actually wanna make sure that, let's, escape that really quick. I'm going to make sure that he's over the left leg. I'm going to get rid of a little bit of this. And we're going to warp it. Again, it's, you got to be really careful with the warp tool. Simply because it moves the whole thing at once. looks like his leg is broken a little bit so I'm going to go into liquify I'm gonna fix that let's not oh that's the bloat tool we don't want to do that let's bring this back a little bit yeah that's a little bit better a natural kind of outward curve um, I am going to bring this left leg back oops back in a little bit just to hide behind that leg it gives us a little more movement or feeling of movement that's happening and this right leg is gonna yeah cool you notice looking at them this is darker and I'm gonna go over that in a little bit Sweet. Um, also, I know in this one, I tilted his waist a little bit to get more of that line of action. And so I'm going to grab everything that's above his torso. So shoulders, arms, helmet, baby Yoda. We're all gonna tilt a little bit. So baby Yoda to shoulders. We're going to control, oops, I guess I'm missing an arm in there. Yep. T. We're going to pull this anchor point over here by the waist where he would naturally bend. We're going to do this. So we're getting this line of action here. It's a little bit stronger. I like it. Okay, what happens now if we take all of this and move it like this? I knew I wanted a little bit of like a Western feel. Um, I've seen a lot of movie posters where they kind of put everything on an angle and I, I really wanted that for this. Um, so we're getting it there, we're getting there. I think his foot needs to be kind of 
I want it to bulge out a little bit on the bottom. It looks very narrow. Yeah, more like a boot. Comparing it back. All right, in this picture, I think his arm is a little bit lower. So let's make this. Going back and forth, you can see that Baby Yoda and his arm is a little bit lower. It's a little more relaxed. And I'll have to think of what I want to show off in the character for that. And then his arm, if you go really fast, you can almost see the animation between them. Um, his arm needs to be raised up just a little bit. I like that he's, you know, more like staring down um, this, whoever he's shooting at. So let's bring this anchor point back here and let's rotate this up a little bit, hiding it in there. Yeah. Also his uh, shoulder plate moves and I think I like it more in this one than I do in this one. This one that looks a little too flat. This one, it definitely goes up to where his shoulder is, so I think I'm gonna keep it like that. Okay, you guys. Um, the only other thing that's really big, I mean, I'll add the cape in in a second, but his left leg is farther back, and I'm wondering if I wanna keep it. It definitely forces the perspective a bit, and I definitely love that. Um, let's, let's keep that. So how I'm going to do that is I'm going to do the warp again. I'm just going to bring this up in and out a little. I really forced it in that last one. Looking good, guys. We're looking good. Also, his neck is a little bit longer in this first picture. I think I like that as well. Um, less cowardly like a turtle and more, you know, prominent and, and confident. Yeah, cool. Awesome, this is looking really good. Save. Okay, now that we have everything aligned, um, like I said, I think I'm gonna go back and decide what I like for the baby Yoda and his arm and stuff like that. I can now go in and I think I'll add the background first. Um, it'll kind of set the tone and it'll tell me where to put shadows and stuff. So for this, I'm, instead of walking you through the backgrounds, that's a whole nother, um, that's a whole nother tutorial. I'm gonna just copy what I have in this one really quick. Um, I think it'll just be a little bit faster and, um, it'll speed this process up. You don't have to watch me go through all that. If you want to see that, comment, let me know that you want to learn how to do backgrounds. This one is just, is very simple. It was more for me to get an idea of the color palette. This is not how the final picture is going to look. Again, it's just to tell me where to put shadows and stuff, but I know that I want these colors. I know that I want this kind of feel to it. Um, so let's grab everything associated with the background, which I believe is all this. I didn't label everything nearly as well as I should have in the other one. Um, I'm going to group this. This is going to be my background. We're going to bring it to the back. 
Cool. Okay. Sweet. Background. Um. Now, figuring out how to make everything look a little more cohesive. Um, these are the exact same pictures, just colored or shaded or highlighted differently. So, I'm going to go in and the first thing I definitely notice is this break between the torso and the shoulders. Uh, so we're going to take care of that first. And I'm going to make the torso look more like the new armor, so I'm going to need to color change a bit. Um, again, a million and one different ways to do this, but this is the easiest way for me. And what I do is I'm going to click on our torso and I'm going to go down to our, I don't know what um, set of tools this is, but it's like kind of altering stuff. You can just change, um, min make minimal changes to the, um, the all this stuff here. So the gradients um, or patterns, you can add a solid color, you can choose the vibrance or the hue and saturation. So for this one, I'm going to do hue and saturation. And I know that I'm going to have to pull the saturation down a little bit, so I'm going to do that. And if you notice, like I did earlier on accident, this is adjusting the whole picture. Don't want that. As long as this is above the layer you want it to affect, hit that alt button or hold it down and make sure that there's this tiny little arrow going onto the layer you want to affect. So now I can pull this down and it's just affecting that layer. Great. Um, I know that there are ways that you can color pick and match up the hues and everything perfectly. I don't need that for what I'm drawing. I know what colors to use to get the tones that I want, but this is just for um, trying to figure out, you know, how to make it look as cohesive as possible uh, in the time that I have. If I sat here and did the hues for everything, it might take a while. Um, this is just the easy way. So looking at his armor from the newer stuff, it's got kind of like a reddish maroon, almost purple undertone to it. Some parts are a little more green, um, but I'm going to try to give that same undertone to his torso. So I'm going to slide the hue doesn't take it doesn't go very it doesn't I don't need to go very far to get it there um, and then I'm gonna bring that saturation down even farther uh, I think that's pretty close so not too bad What's cool about adding these um, kind of effects layers is that they already come with a mask. And so if there are portions of this piece that I don't want to be affected by that, just the way that I did with um, masking out the pieces individually when we were trying to get rid of the backgrounds and stuff, I can go in and I can put black on. Uh, it's, a, it's a little bit the opposite. It's the black on what you don't want affected by the effects layer. Effects layer. So um, I know for a fact, looking at the, the reference photo of the newer armor, I know... Let's find it again. Um, this one. I know that his belt still remains brown. I know that his shoes still remain brown. His gloves still stay orange. Um, this, the, basically, just the armor changed. His stuff underneath didn't really change. Um, when he got an upgrade, it just he got really shiny, shiny and silver. So I'm gonna leave this here as my reference, and I'm going to color over the spots that I, as long as my brush is black. There it is. Um, I'm going to just kind of color in the area and everything else stays the same except for what I don't want. And I also can kind of use this as a comparison, like does this exactly match? Not quite. Um, what I'm going to do is, let's look at the shoulder piece. What happens if I get rid of this? There we go. That's a little bit closer. Um, and going back into the torso. Can pull this out a little bit. 
sweet. So going back into the effects layer, I'm just gonna color, I think like his holster didn't change. Also, I love this this picture. I also want a reference from the actual show. It might clarify a couple things. Awesome. Um, I'm going to... So that's pretty darn close uh, for that portion of it. I don't think I have to do anything else to his torso. Let's go down to, so like I was saying before, if I know that something is shiny and if I know how to draw something shiny, it would be very easy for me to just take that and apply that to um, these pieces of armor down here. But I am a super needy reference person. And so I'm going to try to match this stuff up again with the armor up there. I'm going to make it more of a gray tone. It won't be shiny. It's not going to change. Um, you know, it's got all these dings and stuff in it. I can fix that later when I'm doing the drawing. Or I can try to find a picture of his actual armor and just replace it over. But for right now, I just want to sync the colors up a little bit more. So I'm going to go to his right leg and actually... I can group his right leg and his left leg, and I can, um, so these are his legs. You notice we go back, a, back and forth a little bit of, of grouping and ungrouping, um, but I can take the hue and saturation to this right away. Make sure that that is right on top of that group, that effects layer, bring this down. Um, actually, that's pretty darn close in terms of the cloth matching the cloth cool looking back at this reference photo over here certain things I need to go over uh, and not uh, change so I'm gonna bring back their original colors shoes stayed the same Boots stayed the same. Sweet. Okay. I might take down the saturation a little bit more. Yeah, that's better. Alright. Um, let's... Really, the only other thing that needs to change is this arm. Let's do his right arm. Make sure that this layer is right on top. Bring down the saturation. Give it a different tone. Going to purple, going to like more of a bluish gray. There we go. gonna bring it back a little bit because this cape part is more of like a purple undertone just like it's part of the shoulder piece so trying to match up that cape as best as possible but doesn't have much color to begin with that's pretty close though and I'm going to undo the bit on his hand and his gun Okay, so I think everything is really color changed to the point where he's a little more uniform. Um, this part of his belt is bugging the crap out of me, so I'm going to go in and I'm going to liquefy his shoulders. We're going to bring this belt over. If I can. I 
how does that look? Again, not terrible, but still a little wonky. I can also just erase that part of the shoulders. So that I have the actual belt. Okay, hold on. Before we do that, I'm going to undo that. There we go. Now I'm going to give it the mask. And... There. That's better. Yeah. Nice. Okay. So now, let's add the cape in. The cape is really cool. Um, it definitely adds to that swoop that I was talking about, that line of action. So let's grab I believe I pieced it from this picture. Lasso. Oops. Lasso. Grab all of this. And oops, wrong. <laughs> this is what happens when you work with multiple documents. you let me apply that because I didn't actually rasterize it all right I'm gonna swing this behind everything else I don't want it in the background. There we go. Bring that up. And this one I don't necessarily have to have um, completely to scale because it's something that moves so frequently that no matter where it is in the picture, like obviously I can't make it, you know, super big, taller than him. Um, but it doesn't have to be spot on. I'm going to match it up with this part of his cape up here, and I'm definitely going to warp it to kind of give it that curve that I want. Blown in the wind.
close enough for right now. Um, and this is definitely going to have to change color. Let's make sure that it is on that guy. I'm gonna bring the saturation way down to get it into that gray zone. And then we're gonna try to give it that purple undertone. thing I'm gonna do is kind of um, we're gonna change up the shadows and highlights on here just because uh, with the Sun in the background it's gonna be more on the side of a silhouette than a very detailed up-close image and um, I gotta go in respectively and kind of figure out what parts uh, need to be lighter what parts need to be darker what parts would cast shadows on other things or cast reflections on other things so I am going to start off with um, the cape and I am going to use the dodge and the burn tool just for a little bit. Um, I think those help, those help me to an extent um, because I, I mean, you have to get, I felt like it took me a while to get used to them, but it basically the burn tool makes things darker, the dodge tool makes things brighter. And it's all based on way back when, um, when people had actual, like, when they were using film film instead of just digital stuff, um, you would actually burn the film strip, uh, to make it darker. I don't know what they used to dodge it, um, maybe like a, like a rubbing alcohol of some kind, that's what I'm guessing, not sure. But I know that's where those terms come from. Um, so I'm gonna grab the burn tool and I'm going to hit up the cloak a little bit just to make it darker underneath. Um, and again, use this tool with a little bit of caution, I think, I don't know. Um, I want to give it a really nice edge. I'm going to go into the dodge tool and I'm going to highlight a bit of this. I want it to match up here. So I'm going to kind of hit up the edges. I'm also going to add a mask to this and just get rid of, I'm going to make some holes in his cape basically, um, just to kind of give it a little something extra. He's been all over the place, um, you know, maybe not just like that. Let's spread this out a little bit. Kind of tear up the cloak. I like things when they look kind of distressed. Um, I think it adds a little. says he's been places. <laughs> nice. Um, Alright, so for the cape right now, I think looking at it now, I want to take out that purple a little bit, make it a little more blue. to darken up um, some of the you know the broadest spots where the light would not reach and before I do all that I'm going to group everything together um, if I need to go back in and do something on a particular layer I'll just go uh, into the group but right now this is Mando all right brush tool at the ready um, I'm choosing a brush that isn't Sometimes I want to choose a brush that's got a texture to it, and sometimes I just want a very, um, just a very soft brush. Um, I think I'm going to start off with the soft brush, only because 
Um, I can go back in and like erase spots where shadows wouldn't reach. Um, but I think I'm gonna do this first. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put this layer on soft light and I'm going to grab kind of a deep orange because that's what our setting is telling us that light would be kind of on the yellow side of things. I'm just going to this soft light I have my brush ah it didn't work there we go and let's up this quite a bit yeah okay so now as I go over things with my orange brush I'm gonna get into the crevices and the cracks where light would not reach maybe not have this up to 100% but I'm just gonna kind of brush it over um, specifically where things are like right on top of each other. And towards the middle um, of all of these things because that is where the light wouldn't naturally reach. Alright, so that's an orange layer. I'm going to also do a little bit of a... I like the bluish yellow going on in here, so I'm gonna grab a blue layer. I'm gonna do the same thing. Um, I can go right over it, but sometimes working with these effects layers are um, a little shifty. You don't really know what's gonna cancel out what. Um, so I'm gonna, just gonna try this with the blue. Yeah. It's getting a little too dark. Um, but I can also make this layer a little more uh, translucent. <laughs> uh, and yes, it's looking very dark right now, but like I said, I'm going to... To put in some highlights. Um, you can either erase parts you think wouldn't necessarily be hit up with these this orange and this blue layer that I just created. Um, so like on the orange layer, you know, I think his, his um, well, especially Mr. Mr. Baby Yoda over here wouldn't have the harshest light on him. His gloves might not have it. Some of the highlights in um, the potato sack that Baby Yoda is in. Let's see what else might... I don't know. I think, I think we're kind of okay for this. Just for now, for general. Um, when I'm drawing it, I can decide. I can make further decisions, too. Um, I think I'm gonna go in and hit up the edge of Baby Yoda's potato sack with the burn tool, because it's creating kind of a a light in there that I don't want um, and I can get in really close to underneath where that um, where his arm would cast a shadow on baby Yoda all right let's get back to that highlight layer one more layer and this time I'm just going to do um, straight up white as my brush and I'm gonna kind of highlight like the outer rim of some of this because with the sun directly behind like the armor and his arm itself it kind of makes the edges a little fuzzy you don't have such a contrast um you on the gun a little bit and i know that i'm um going across the uh i'm going into the background a little bit but i can always either go back and erase or i can highlight um, parts and select them and then delete the excess space. I just want this to be like soft. Soft 
details. Cool. I think I'm just gonna hit it up with a little bit of yellow and then we should be okay. Um, I haven't I haven't really changed the effects on the layer, so I'm just gonna go in um, with some yellow and nope, I don't want it to be that opaque. Spots where. here. Um, so I'm going to go down to the cape. I'm going to Oops. Hmm. So maybe I just went way too far with the dodge tool on this guy. Doing it on the actual layer would be nice. just to ground him a little bit. He just needs a shadow um, cast onto the ground. Let's do this really quick. I'm just gonna darken that up. Um, yeah, and then under everything, We're going to do... No way. Multiply is a good one for shadows on the ground. Um, so is linear burn. You can kind of just play around with some of these. Um, let's do the linear burn one. And then back it off. Let's just midge. What you can even do to make it look a little more realistic is that you can take an eraser to that or do a mask and grab a texture brush. get rid of some of that because the parts on the ground that are sticking up would catch light from the sun or there are pieces at the very least that would catch some light awesome what do you guys think I think we're good. Um, I think I'm gonna go back and forth between these two and pick the best parts of both of them. Um, and then hopefully you guys will get to see this as a live drawing and hopefully a finished, um, well, there are definitely some differences, but 
um, a finished time lapse, which would be really cool. Uh, so thanks for hanging out with me and going through all of this with me and hopefully learning a little bit. Um, this is how I Frankenstein images and this is, this will be one of the next things that I draw on a canvas. I'm very excited about it. Um, hope you guys enjoyed it. Please leave any feedback that you feel would be helpful. Uh, and we will see you on the next tutorial. Bye!